In the course of their development, humans strive to learn as much as possible about everything. As learning progressed, knowledge was categorized under different sciences, including biology. As a scientific field, biology is subdivided into numerous subdisciplines, such as cytology, which delves into the study of cell structure, biochemistry, which explores the chemical reactions taking place inside a cell, anatomy, which provides insights into organs and their functionality, genetics, which studies genomes and everything related to them, paleontology, which is devoted to the study of prehistoric life, ecology, which studies the interaction of living things with their environment, botany, zoology, and mycology, which are the sciences of plants, animals, and fungi, respectively. But let's start with cell theory, which posits that all living organisms are composed of cells, and that cells themselves originate through their own division. These building blocks are able to grow, reproduce, and more through metabolism. It involves the conversion of food into energy and the building of materials. Much like a voracious leprechaun hiding its gold, the cell stores information about its organism. Following cell division, the DNA is replicated into the newly formed cell. Nevertheless, there is a slight possibility that the replication may not proceed as intended. In such instances, certain genes may undergo alterations, resulting in the acquisition of a mutation. In turn, these alterations can influence certain traits in the organism and be passed on to its descendants. These newly acquired traits may be advantageous, enhancing the organism's chances of survival. This leads to more offspring, but those with unfavorable mutations have lower chances of survival. This principle, called natural selection, is a key mechanism in the evolution process. And since we are talking about DNA, it is worth mentioning the key role of this molecule, the storage of information. The unit of memory in a molecule is DNA, which is far more sophisticated than any digital storage device. As an illustration, a single gram of DNA is theoretically capable to store 215 petabytes, equivalent to 215 million gigabytes. For example, all internet content could fit in a shoebox if it were stored in DNA. The information stored in DNA is utilized to construct new proteins. It also dictates the body's physical appearance and functionality. Lastly, let's explore a vital capability called homeostasis. It entails controlling physiological processes to uphold balance in living systems. For example, birds can cool their bodies in response to hot temperatures, or mammals that can adjust the body temperature to cold external conditions, unlike some amphibians which simply freeze in cold temperatures. Now let's quickly examine the life forms we've covered thus far. Starting with bacteria, these are simple single-celled organisms with a basic internal structure. It lacks a nucleus and its DNA floats freely inside. Bacteria were among the earliest life forms to emerge on Earth. They evolved to thrive in water, soil and environments with radioactive waste. While some of them contribute to our digestion, others can cause serious diseases such as the bubonic plague. Their size usually falls between 1 and 5 micrometers in length. In contrast, other organisms have a nucleus where their DNA is securely stored. These are termed eukaryotes, and among the simplest of this group are protists. Essentially, this term encompasses all unicellular organisms with a nucleus, but without the ability to form complex structures. Their highest level of organization is forming colonies to support collective survival, as seen in algae. Yet, some protists have the capability to convert sunlight into energy. From such organisms, plants emerged as multicellular entities capable of photosynthesis. Plants in general might not appear overly thrilling, so let's simplify by categorizing them into four groups. Ferns, mosses, conifers, and flowering plants. Fungi, on the other hand, are unique in being somewhat related to both plants and animals. They remain stationary like plants, but lack the ability to photosynthesize. This means they need to obtain organic carbon from external sources. In contrast to animals with mouth organs and digestive tracts, fungi absorb nutrients through their entire body. 
in some organisms, development begins with cells called blastomers. They aid in the formation of specialized tissues and organs. This process results in the formation of animals that in turn feed on other organic materials. However, unlike fungi, they are not confined to a single location throughout their lives. The majority of animals possess musculoskeletal systems, aiding them in movement through the use of fins, tentacles, and various limbs. Moreover, a key indicator of evolutionary success is the ability of creatures to develop and adapt. Of course, we're referring to the biological superprocessor known as the brain. In conclusion, all the animal kingdoms are further classified into phyla, classes, orders, families, genera, and species. Besides the mentioned, there are also viruses, viroids, and prions. And biology itself is based on four main areas, the cell theory, evolution, genetics, and homeostasis. But the key point is that for something to be deemed a living entity, it must comprise cells and possess the capacity to maintain homeostasis. It should have metabolism, undergo a life cycle, and possess the ability to grow, interact with the environment, and undergo reproduction. We hope everyone who watched the video passed this test. On the other hand, there are even more fascinating subjects, such as astrobiology, the purpose of which is to study the origin and future of life in the universe. Or, for example, bioinformatics, which deals with the analysis and interpretation of biological data. Each is a distinct realm, delving into which expands our understanding of ourselves and our surroundings. Subscribe to the channel to keep learning interesting things about different sciences. 